Hey everybody, back with uh, probably, I guess, part two of this um, pole position PCB. Yesterday, um, I got this CPU board working, and I figured I'd come back real quick. We had a couple errors on vi the video board. Um, there's a little bit of a graphic glitch, and I think it was reporting periodically RAM 31 and 49, which is, I believe, 3E... 4E and 4F. Yeah, so it's these two um, over here. So anyway, um, so also I wanted to come in. I had this, I replaced 7C in my previous video. I'll link to it. I replaced 7C with a gal and um, our most enthusiastic arcade YouTube video watcher, Wayne Graham. That's what it goes by. Um, and anyway, he, he, he wanted, he mentioned, uh, was this actually the problem? Um, and it was a problem and I'll show you what the behavior looks like. I also replaced the Z 8000s and I figured while I had this board on the bench, I'd put in a zero insertion, um, four socket, um, as you know, basically ZIF, and then I'll test a whole bunch of Z 8000 twos that I have. Um, just to, you know, alleviate the pain of trying to figure out if they're bad later. So I have this one in here, and that this one is working, and we'll show the behavior of a non-working one as well. So with that, let's go ahead and power on. See RAM 31. And then I get an OK message, and it boots up fine. If I hit my test... Okay, it went right. So periodically I'm getting a RAM 31, which is 4E, and 4.9, which is 4F. So I don't know if these, you know, if it's a socket, if, what it is, but um, anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. So let's go ahead and test a non-working Z80 in here. All right, this is kind of the easy way to test these instead of probing around and stuff. I don't have a fluke pod for a Z8000. This is, I keep calling this a Z80. It's a Z8000 II. It's a 16-bit versus a 8-bit Z80. Um, anyway, this is the easier way to do it because I'm kind of cheating since I have a working board, but we'll power on, see what we get. And that's the behavior we're getting. And we saw that in my previous video at one point. Pretty early on in the video. So like the PAL might not have been 100% failed right away. Because I think we saw that pretty early on. But um, the other thing is I've been doing some research. And there's... Um, I'm not sure. I think these Z8000s, they both have two you know, program memory... Um, and they both address the same RAM, which I think is over here on the, the graphics board, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is it? Um, yeah, I'd have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure the RAM they access is over here. Um, but they both have two program ROMs. And Pole Position 2, I think they have additional ROMs that they can address. But these are the ones that they're each addressing. And I... It's not clear to me like one is responsible for one thing and the other one's responsible for another. It's not clear to me of that yet. Um, for instance, I'll put this this um, CPU in this socket, and I bet we see a very similar behavior. Let's find out. All right, let's power it on. I have my bad Z8000 right there. Let's see what happens. Kind of similar. It is a little bit different, actually. Um, but very similar kind of behavior. So that's what I'm getting at is each one is controlling, you know, like ha is doing half the work, I, I think, in the back of my mind. I don't know. I have to dive into the schematics a little bit more, but I don't think like one's for graphics and one's for sound. This is the sound CPU. Um, yeah. These things run pretty hot, though. Or maybe this thing's hot because... No, no, that, I remember. They run hot. Anyway, that's what it looks like with a bad Z8000. But everything's working. And I guess let's check to see if my CPU's resetting. 
I'm not going to waste a lot of time, you know, on this. Um, I'm just probing the reset line. And yeah, it's it's not resetting. The At least the main CPU isn't. Yeah. It's not resetting. Anyway, I'm not going to spend time trying to troubleshoot why the Z8000s don't work. I'll cross that bridge if I ever have to, but um, I'll come back and what I'm going to do before I start troubleshooting this board, I'm going to remove all the sockets, I'm going to clean the board, clean all the chips, and then I'll come back and test these RAM and my Neo lock first, but I think they'll pass because they are passing the test. Oh look, I just it just reset. Oh no it didn't, I don't have my probe connected. <laughs> I think eventually it does eventually reset, but it's like trying to boot and just not not getting there with that bad Z80 and Z8000 and 3A. So, all right, enough of that. Right, I almost forgot. Um, I want to put it in my bad um, PAL, I guess, programmable logic array. P it's a, I think it's a PLA or something, 82S153 programmable logic array i don't know it's fused that's all i know 82s 153 that's what it looks like when i try to boot it nothing happening yeah i have it in right just hmm no rom six error nothing let me see now this one maybe we will. Yeah, just zero zero zeros. If I check my reset, reset is high. And let's check 11, 12. 12 has activity. Let's speed that up a little bit. So when I did the signature anal whoops, when I did signature analysis on this, um, that's pin 12. I knew one of the pins was wrong. I think it was either 10 or 13. But it wasn't reporting low. But this thing doesn't look right. This might have gotten even worse. Yeah, I mean, the PAL is totally jacked up now. <laughs> the signatures we were getting, though... Um, that's why it's probably not even doing anything. Let me try reseeding it. Now, I reseeded the same um, 7C PAL. And there we go. There's our RAM 6, and, and uh, it's resetting. It's, so if we check our reset pin here, you see that it's resetting. If we check, um, let's go through pin 12. Yeah, it's resetting but it has activity. And maybe that's why we were getting signatures on it. Hmm. No, no, I wouldn't have been resetting um, if I had the FPGA cat box in there. And the FPGA cat box, when we're doing signature analysis, it's actually, yeah, it's actually um, sending signals, right? So here it's just resetting. So a little bit different behavior, obviously. But pin 13 is completely dead. So I could have probably determined that this was bad Again, I'm referring back to my last video. Just by probing pin 13, it looks dead. Um, we didn't need to do the signature analysis, but it was kind of nice to do it. And that's probably why. Pin 14 is not tied to anything. Pin 15. Speed it up a little bit. That's 14, 15, 16. You can see it trying to do stuff. 
17. Yeah, it's trying to do stuff. But anyway, RAM 6 was definitely due to the PAL chip and probably could have figured it out without signature analysis, but signature analysis kind of pointed out that I was jacked up. So, all right. And I tested, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven working um, Z8002s, so that means only one's bad because I have four board sets, um, which is nice. So out of the eight, only one's bad, which was actually in this board from the previous video. All right, now let's go back and fix our graphics boards. I'm removing all the chips, cleaning them, and um, you know, cleaning the boards and all that stuff. All right, this is the uh, graphics board right here. Um, I'll be quick because the TV's on. One thing that's interesting is 2F has a machine socket in it, and I can't really tell that it was replaced ever before, so that's kind of interesting. But anyway, removed all the sockets. You know, some of these, um, you know, like I mentioned before, you could use Tarnex on them because they're gold plated or silver plated. But anyway, I'm going to clean all the chip legs and I'm going to test these 6116s. But first, let me clean the board and then um, clean the legs and we'll come back. All right, the CPU board is dry. Um, I put it on the fan. I blew it. Actually, I wash it. Then I take it to the um, air compressor and then I put it on the fan. And basically, I'm just going to put some uh, deoxid, just like this. Just like that. Um, and I'm going to do that to all the sockets. Okay, I took, I've cleaned both boards. Every chip has been removed. I cleaned it with a Dremel. Every socket has been, um, de had some deoxid put on it. Again, I don't know if those are good things to do or not. I mean, RK Jason says you probably shouldn't use the Dremel, but I kind of like doing it <clears throat> and and then putting the deoxid. So, don't know. The only thing is um, this chip at 2F, and this is one of the reasons why I like removing all the chips, is 2F has this machine socket, machine pin in it, and the chip legs were very oxidized, and one of the chip legs actually um, fell off when I was using a Dremel. So, like, one of the things that the Dremel does, if there's weak legs, you know, you'll know it'll, it'll kind of break them off. Um, but there was only one leg that was really weak like that. The rest of them were fine. And this is in the, like, sink counter chain, I think, this 2F. So I doubt that has anything to do with our... Reading our RAM over here, um, 4E and 4F, that was reporting bad. But let's go ahead and power it on. And that's not good. We got problems. Oh, I think I might have here. I, 3E. Yeah, that is 3E and that's 4E. Right? Oh, I thought I found a problem. Hmm. I'm gonna have to check. This is a CPU board issue. Not booting up after cleaning the board. Uh, we're getting it to boot, but it's shaking a little bit, which is weird. Oh, there we go. That's That was 2F I just had to press on. Just pressed on 2F. All I did is repower cycle it. Um, so it seems to be working, but we did get a different RAM error, which was 51, I think, right? Let's go ahead and power off. Power back on. Yeah, it's kind of still a little crazy there. Is it 2F? Yep. I'm pressing down on that 2F. I wonder if that socket is not great or what. <clears throat> I 
let me remove this 2F and then uh, look at that socket again. All right, reseated it. Yeah, see how it's kind of bouncing a little bit? Ram 51. Like it's shaking it. I don't know if you guys can see that. And if I press down on that socket, boom. Interesting. I might need to check out that socket. And either, prob um, I don't know, because it didn't look like there was any work done to it. I, I flipped over the graphics board and <clears throat> I'm cleaning up some solder. So there were a couple of chips that must have been replaced um, previously. This one was one. And it still had some flux and stuff like that. This one was another one here. I'm just making a mark so I can come back to it. And then this one here, I haven't cleaned up yet, but you can kind of see that it's got flux and crap over it. So I'm fixing, fixing the, I'm just cleaning them up right now. And then I'll probably desolder that socket and replace it, that machine socket. All right, if you can see, I have the machine pins out, but there was definitely previous work done. There's a couple, uh, yeah, see, uh, let's see, uh, right there. That might have just been hanging on barely. I don't know what, what was going on. And right there, too. Both of those are messed up. And most of the pads because that there's no traces on the bottom side for here here all these all those pads are gone this pads almost it's barely hanging on right there yeah and that wasn't <clears throat> that wasn't me i mean it was probably already damaged and then because i used flux and my desoldering iron i didn't even touch the pad with the gun so they must have been you know, if any lifted from me, they were already half gone, so. Oh, yeah, there's that trace. It's just kind of messed up a little bit. I need a magnifying light, but um, I think I did a decent job right there. But there's my work. So let's hook it back up and see if a new socket works. I have everything hooked wrong. up. I like powering it on with you guys. That way, if my mistakes we make them together now it doesn't look like that changed the shaking hmm it is booting up but i had to press on that 2f again to get that shaking this time it's kind of weird i think it's 2f I might put this in a machine socket and then solder the legs. Okay, I have it in a machine socket. Let's see. But I haven't soldered anything. Yeah, well, booted right up. I didn't have to press on anything. Why is it shaking like that? And right, I'm going to press on 2F and see if that shaking goes away. Boom. Shaking just went away as soon as I pressed on it. Hmm. Yeah, if I'm going to use a machine socket, I'm going to solder all those legs to that machine socket. Might as well. Alright, I just went to grab a different 07, which is the clock divider. From all Namco's, I'm sure most people know this, but um, the first two numbers is what matters, not the second two numbers on the Namco Customs. So there was a 0701 that was in there, and I, it has one bad leg, but who knows if the other legs could be messed up. I'm, I pulled this one from a board I haven't worked on yet, and look how corroded those legs are. So I'm going to clean it up and try it here. Right, I have a different chip in there. I don't even know if this one works because I just pulled it off a board. Oh, maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> Now I'm getting errors. Okay. 
What is going on? I might pull one of these from a, my working Super Pac-Man board. Or maybe it's unrelated to this chip. I don't know. It like shakes for a little bit and then it stabilizes. Hmm. All right, it's still the same chip. I just powered it back on, and it's just sitting here doing this crazy stuff for like the last two minutes straight. And I'm all I'm going to do is push on this chip. I pushed hard enough, and then boom. Yeah, there's there's got to be a weird connection. I think. Alright, I have the original chip back in there, and I don't think it was the socket to begin with. Obviously, I'm not getting those RAM errors 31 and 49 anymore. Um, so, cleaning these sockets and legs probably cleared that up. But, do I have a little bit... Of, there's a little tiny gla graphic glitch on the cards every once in a while. But I think my problem is my edge connector here... I, there's a couple pins that are a little whacked out. So let's power it on. And you see how it is right there? Like not booting up right away. Now I'm just going to press right here on this board. I'm going to just press down on the edge connector. And it just booted. I. I'm wondering if this is something that, I don't know, my edge connector, when I had to resolder it a little while ago, um, there's a couple pins that are a little jacked up, not 100%. So I'm going to put this board set in the, in the cabinet, and let's see what it looks like in the cabinet, if there's even those graphic glitches there. Yeah, I'm at the cabinet now, and there's none of those startup issues that I can tell, but you can see a little bit of the glitches in the cars so I'm just going to power off real quick and then power back on let's see yeah so I have a, a I screwed up my little interconnect thing there. It's not perfect. But we have some graphics glitches still in the car, so let me research that. All right, I think the key is seeing, um, describing the behavior here. So it, there's, um, in the manual, it says large cars and small cars. So the graphics issue we're having is in the small cars I believe Let's see what it looks like here in a second I'm gonna turn off the light all right so the large cars see there's no lines that real close but as the cars get further away and smaller you see the horizontal lines going through the car so it's definitely a sprite issue and it's telling us that it's the small cars I think so let me go look at the manual and pull the boards out. Okay, so it says small cars and signs 12N and 13N. And no associated custom, 12N, 13N. And those are, this is on the picture memory and signs. And 12N and 13N, obviously feet still um, feeds the 13H custom, but I guess we we can check these first. I'll I'll swap them out with uh, known working ones first, real quick. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that 12N, 13N. That is over here. Now one thing that was kind of interesting I was reading on the main driver is this 11N. If it it's not the 231 version um, if it's a 131 that might be that's like an original um, from the factory glitch in the in the software so I believe 
this is the newer version 231 so that's not the glitch we're talking about so it's got to be either one of these ROMs isn't 100% or 13H or something else or this prom here but I would think if that prom was bad we'd get other issues I bet swapped in um, for my working board 12N and 13N I also reversed this connector here and I think it's behaving better let's see boom <laughs> boots right up yeah it was definitely the connector I don't know why it likes being in the other position let's see if we still have the lines I do not see any lines that's pretty simple let's go I'll um, go to my programmer and try to verify them but that looks like the problem read the directions 12n 13n one of those is bad right here alright this is why I like my BK864 or other programmers that verify at minimum and maximum voltage so this is a 2364 but I'm just setting it up as see select device a 2764 yeah we'll just do a regular 2764 um, we're not programming it so it doesn't really matter we're just reading it at 5 volts hit OK and let's edit our device options because basically what it's saying is 5 volts for VCC um, and then it's telling you the programming volts and stuff like that. That's fine. Um, let's edit device options. No. Device operations. Yeah, verify at plus or minus 10%. So let's do t plus or minus 10%. So it's going to verify at, you know, what, 5.5 volts and 4.5 volts, I believe, right? So all we're going to do is read it, and it does not like it, you know, verifying it at the max. So if I put in, take that chip out for right now, put in 13N, and we're just reading it on itself. And it verified, it read it and verified itself at min and max voltage. Now let's put 12N back in and we're going to change our device options. No, device. Oh gosh, where do I change this damn thing at? <laughs> uh, not device info. Edit device options. Oh gosh. There's got to be a way beyond reselecting it. I'll have to look look for that later. All right. Device operation options. We're going to do it at plus or minus 5%, which would be 5.25 volts and 4.75 volts. Let's see if we can read it. Nope. So it definitely reads okay. Let's see what our error log says. Reading device. Verifying device at VCC max. Can't do it. Let's go ahead and save this file. Um, we're going to call it 12N. Save. We're going to open up a browser. Be right yeah, on. I just, whatever it read off of the e, um, the prom here, I loaded into ROM ident and it does not verify as anything. So we know this is bad. And 13N, I guarantee you, is probably good. So let me burn another a 2764 real quick. All right, I, I have a 2764 in there. But I found it. Device, device options, operation options, and then here you can choose, you know, how you want to verify it um, at what nominal vo voltage above VCC. 
Um, all right, so the other thing is you want to make sure... Um, I didn't know which version of pole position I needed to load, but um, I think it's pole position Atari A2. Because when I look at that file of A2, you can see that 231 that I was talking about is in there. And if you look at pole position Atari A1, it is 131. Um, it's in order. So that's the that's the older version right there. All right. So anyway, let's program the sucker. Program. And I'll come back, put it in the game. New ROM at 12N. And we have no more horizontal lines going through the small cars. No more little graphics issues there. So that was quick and easy. I probably didn't need to... Well, I'm glad I cleaned all the chips because now I'm no longer getting these um, errors, RAM errors when I'm booting up. I was getting those RAM errors. And... Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that that has something to do with the chips being dirty or the sockets, whatever. So all the boards are clean. I have a little bit of a flaky edge connector here on my bench, but I think it's good. Let's power it off. Wait a little bit. Power it on. And it boots right up. No problems. I don't know. I need to eventually do something better with my edge connector because I had to desolder this side and resolder it and the pins got heated and one of them slipped out and I had to futz with it and stuff so it's kind of flaky but that's that's it um CPU board done yesterday video board done today that's it guys thanks for watching pole position it's a lot easier when you have other boards working boards that you can swap stuff around so on to some more disastrous ones. I have a couple that have a ton of battery damage and stuff like that. Just boards are filthy. So I'm going to do that next week probably. Cheers.